Now that we understand the basics of how express routing works, let's take a look at how it renders views. We're going to dive right in, so if you need a refresher, make sure to check out JS Quick Hits 52, where we introduce Express, JS Quick Hits 53, where we cover what's happening in app.js, and last week's JS Quick Hits 54, where we go over routing. This one runs a bit long, again. Sorry, this stuff is a bit more complicated than, like, here's how array.map works. Open up slash views slash index.ejs. Let's take a look. It's a pretty simple file, so that's neat. It's basically HTML with a few minor tweaks. For one thing, we're using single quotes for attributes instead of double quotes. This makes me sad because it blurs the line between what's JS and what's HTML a little more than I'd like. It's also not necessary, so I'm changing that line to double quotes like this. We'll use single quotes in our JS and double quotes in our HTML because that's how I roll and also because I think it makes for a handy visual identifier between what's code and what's markup. Same deal with JSX when working with React. Right, so, code. That brings us to the next minor difference, those bracket percent signs. As you can see, we're referencing something called title. Open up slash routes slash index.js real quick. And take a look at this line. Well, hey, look at that. There's our title. Our view is rendering it out when the page is generated. That happens because of the little equals sign after the opening percent bracket, which tells EJS to output the value generated by the JavaScript code. This guy right here. We can use more complex logic than just giving it a single variable. In fact, let's do that below the welcome paragraph, add this code. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Now it also helps if you spell five correctly. Phi! That's pretty limited, obviously, since it can't really handle multiple lines of JavaScript. Fortunately, we can remove the equals sign and do all of the coding we want, just with the knowledge that we'll need to access any variables we create in a second line of code. Change that whole paragraph we just wrote to this code. Save that. Refresh our view. Same deal. Obviously, that's a little long-winded compared to our first approach, but the sky's really the limit in terms of what you can do, since everything in those percent brackets is just plain old JavaScript. You could get an array of data from the backend and then manipulate that data in the template before displaying it, for example. One other thing to note about the percent brackets without an equal sign is that you can use them to wrap to HTML and JavaScript. Add this paragraph to your document. Save that. Now, that code's ugly as the dog's behind, but it works. Keep refreshing the page, and you'll see the output change. In my opinion, it'd be better to just create the string in JS and then use an equal sign to output the result, but it's good to know that you can pop in and out of JavaScript like that. OK, now we're going to tie things together by creating a view that contains a form, another view that contains some thanks text, and a route that handles both views. Then we're going to add it to app.js and watch it work. We're going to speed through this with only a slight stop for explanation in a few spots. Ready? First, create slash views slash contact.ejs. Inside of it, put this code. It's a simple form with a field set, a couple of inputs. Save that file. And create slash views slash thanks.ejs. Here's the code for this one. Quick note, you don't have to keep repeating things like the HTML tag in every view. EGS supports imports of partial files. We just don't have time to discuss it right now. Instead, save this file and create slash routes slash contact.js. Start with these four lines. Now, below the requires but above the export line, add all of this. I'll scroll through this quickly so you can see the function at the bottom. Sorry for not showing my typing with this, but I'm trying to keep things relatively speedy. So, right, that's a bunch of stuff. The slash get is pretty straightforward. We're going to map that to slash contact in app.js in a second. 
It just displays the view. All good there. Then we capture a post to the same URL. Incoming form information is stored in the body property of rec, with each variable coming from the name attribute in the HTML. We're using that to generate a query string, which is the fastest and easiest way to display data on a page we're forwarding to. We then decode that query string in the final get, down here, which will handle slash contact slash thanks, and pass it as variables for the EJS template to use. Let's get all of this into app.js. Save contact.js, open app.js, find your requires, and add a third one. Then find your app.use blocks, down here, and add a third one. That's it. We're done. Save the file, and let's try things out. Yep, we have a crash. Because I typed app.user, which I do about 100,000 times a day. There we go. Now head for localhost 3000 slash contact. As you can see, it renders our view. Put some stuff in the boxes. Sure, why not? Now click the submit button and let's watch our routes work. All right, that's slightly broken. Here's why. We are missing an ampersand, which tells the query string that this should be a separate variable. That's it. Save. Go back to slash contact. Try again. And submit. Hey, all right. Pretty awesome, right? We've got views working with custom routes. We're handling form data. Things are going well. Next week, we'll take a look at adding middleware to the equation. See you then.